Hello, dear friend, Thomas Matt in the fourth year. I heard this word so clearly uh, a few moments ago. And the Lord stirred me up to come on and do this here, to deliver this to you. The power of an excellent habitation. Write that down and make a note of it. Take a snapshot of it in the heading on the top, the title. The power of an excellent habitation. The Lord said to me clearly, uh, talk about this. I want to tell you something. There's a difference between positivity and negativity in the world that you're in. There's a difference between um, celebration and toleration. There's a difference between people that are for you and people that are not for you. There's a difference between a productive environment and a, an environment that wastes your time. There's a difference between a favorable situation and a non-favorable situation. There's a difference between um, something that short circuits the power that's in you or promotes it and sends it forward. Big difference. And you need to be in the place called there where you are shining bright and moving forward. Now you can do that in, like I, I was talking about the other day. It doesn't matter where you are. Micah 7, 8, I think it was. Micah 7, verse 8. Talked about wherever I'm sitting, the Lord will have me arise and he'll be my light no matter what's going on. If you read the whole context of that chapter of, my, of Micah, they were in a mess. So the, in, the, in the mess of, a, of the world and people and situations, but I want to talk about personally to you. If you want to produce what God has for you to get done, you need to um, have the right environment, people environment, anointing. You need to have the right skill, the right people that have the passion that you have. If you're with people that don't care and they're just taking advantage of you and they're just there to exist for themselves, then they have no business in the vision. They have no business with you because they... They don't care if you make it or not. They just care about what am I getting out of it. Well, they think you're just a fool. Some people, I just wonder, you know, if they just think people are fools, you know. Especially great leaders and God. And I just wonder if they think they're there to waste time and put up with them. I just wonder. But you have to discern that quick. Discernment is something. I mean, there's a world mission that Jesus is going to look at what you've done. And you can't uh, account for it by um, everybody else's standard. You've you got to go by the Lord's standard, you know, what he wants to get done. So today I have a verse here from Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24 do not be envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for the heart devises violence, and their lips talk of troublemaking. Well, that's, that's true. I just want to say you don't need to be envious of anybody that you think that has something that you don't have if they're going to hell, and you're going to heaven. Two different genres of living. Going to heaven has far better. Oh, there's no comparison. Here's what I wanted to say. Through wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. A man of knowledge increases strength. For by his counsel, you will wage your own war. Oh, yes. And in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Wisdom is too lofty for a fool. And it goes on and on. Read that, Proverbs 24. and Read the rest of the book of Proverbs. Very brilliant. Now, I want to I ask you a question. In a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Who, who are your counselors? Where are they? Do you have people that don't even talk about ideas and things? Well, they're not interested. As I was saying, the Lord spoke to me clearly to bring this word. Many people are suffering. They're lacking, not getting what they want, and uh, wondering, where's God? He's right there. He's, he's in heaven, and he's on the earth. By the, the Holy Ghost is here. He didn't go anywhere. Where'd you go? 
you're you're in the wrong you're in the wrong environment. The Lord spoke to me years ago, and He told me to tell um, uh, people this all around the world, and I have been obedient, and I have done it on all six continents. I've spoken this. My feet standing there, and a microphone in my hand, and big crowds, meetings, conferences, churches, revivals, etc., in media, radio, television, and internet. I have said this. Your environment will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. Pollute you could make you sad, could make you frustrated, could keep you stuck. You know, there's some people that just keep you stuck. You need to show them the exit sign. You need to not depend on somebody who has no, uh, how can I say, passion or interest for helping you to succeed. But people don't, some people don't know that in helping you succeed, they succeed. You know, like, remember Jesus said, if you're not faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you your own? Jesus said the true riches are to be sought, you know, <laughs> and fought for and bought, invested in. I said, if, if you are not faithful in that which is another man, man's, who will give you your own? How are you going to get the true riches? The true riches, if you're not faithful in serving. You know, the way up is the way, first the way down. Down leads up, becoming a servant. Who are you serving? Then you, you better know you're getting a harvest from that. I told some testimonies. I was wearing a red shirt and I was in a very beautiful, uh, very posh place. You could see the lighting and the decor where I was sitting. The furniture is very beautiful. It's on my... Uh, uh, social media page now. I can't remember the title. Some about operations of greatness and you know through people, something like that. I was wearing a red, bright red uh, shirt. A very beautiful place. And the Lord, the Lord had me talking about people, the difference of people, and how He's looking for people that to work, to really extend themselves. Now, if someone's heart, if your heart is not in something, then you need to find something where your heart can be, you know, you can do. Otherwise, you're displeasing God. You're doing a disservice to the kingdom. You're twisting this around. You're messing your way into, well, you say, well, I'm there and I'm like, no, 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 no. God knows. God sees it all. Find something that um, you'd rather be doing that you're passionate about and cause that thing to succeed. Now, if you're not the head of the organization... You need to work in, in something that you feel the oomph for, you know, you feel like you want to see it succeed. You're going to every day, every hour, every minute, if you're on a job and you don't care about the job, you're killing yourself by being there. You say, well, no, that's my necessity and that's how I get paid. Is that all you want? There's a little pay like that, a little money. You want to be, a, you want to be someone who God can bless no matter what your salary is. God can bless you on the outside when you do more because you're operating the principles of the kingdom. You're giving, you're going to reap, not from your employment. Someone said, I heard a, a multimillionaire named Jim Rohn. He was a motivational speaker. He, he was a Christian guy. He, he's, he's in heaven now. He died several years ago, but he was the hot motivational speaker of the 80s and 90s, I guess, or, you know, back, back in those days. And uh, he talked about becoming a millionaire. And he said he remembers a time when he was broke. And he was working hard. He was, he was there diligently, but he was working only on that job. He wasn't just doing enough in, in, the, in the external to get paid, excel in his, you know, his life, life work, which he was going to get into. He found that after a while and began to do very well because he began to become principle-oriented. Not just time and space oriented. So you need to get to the point where you're building a very powerful habitation place of excellence, of, of, of productivity, of passion and purpose. And Are you hearing me? Are you feeling this? The Lord is speaking here. And you know, your responsibility as a good person is to pump and promote what you're involved in and attached to and a part of. And you'll get blessed. God will bless you. He'll show you his favor.
Oh, yes, you will. I'm a witness. You know, because, because I passionately work for God every day of my life, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days, 65 days, 365 days a year, decade after decade, year after year, month after month, day after day, minute after minute, hour after hour, week after week. Day. You say, Prophet, do you work 24 hours a day? Well, kind of, because I'm always switched on. Yeah, so like I'm not like, you know, what, what do you call work? I mean, when you're called in the ministry, your spirit and mind and body and, my, and you know, your you're processing things all the time. I'm so intense. There's always conversations going on in the inside of me. And people should tap that grace of the wisdom that God's given me. And many are. Many more will. We're planning to launch out into the deep and uh, reach millions and millions of people. That's the calling of God for me. To do that, to help people. Now listen, if you want to produce anything, you have to have a good environment. I hope you're getting that. Environment matters. Environment. A wise man is strong, but he knows how to build a house by understanding, by knowledge, by discernment, with wisdom that gives precious and pleasant riches. Pleasure, pleasant. There's the word pleasant. It's in Proverbs 24. Here it is. Couple of verses down. Pleasant riches. Pleasant riches. Pleasurable riches. You need to have a pleasurable day every day. If you're not feeling enough of uh, fulfillment and joy, then hey, you're in the wrong arena. And you could make your own arena, though. So I, I want to help somebody. He said, "Well, someone said, well, man of God, I don't have, uh, I don't have everything, you know, set, you know." I don't have everything in place that I'd like to. Well, God knows that. But it's in place inside of you because he gave it to you. So, so work with what you have. Let me give you a practical wherewithal step on how to proceed with things and how to succeed in the proceed. To proceed to, to succeed. Isn't that powerful? You want to proceed. Be proceeding and succeeding. Proceed to succeed. You need to exceed, E-X-C-E-E-D, that's another word, your own limitations or what you feel are your limitations and start to get busy in the program that God has. There's something that you can do today to stoke the fire, to get it burning, to be productive. And I feel such a beautiful presence of the Lord here right now. Can you feel it? There's a sweet, sweet anointing, peace in the air. And I'm ministering to you. It's coming through me by the Holy Ghost to you to bless you and to help you in your life. I'm so excited about it. Feel it. It's like a, there's a cool breeze blowing where I am. I'm in a place at the very top of a mountain and it's not humid. It's, in fact, it's winter time kind of here in this uh, month. Someone says, ah, oh, I know this is dated. It's not live because you're talking winter, but it's summer. No. South of the equator is winter now. In the month, in the very last day of July, which we are right now. And you might be in the hottest time. The end of July in the summer is brutally hot. But here it's cool. There's a cool breeze blowing. There's a sweet atmosphere. Because I'm in the will of God. I'm in the presence of God. Bring it and bringing this to you. So receive that touch right now. I just wanted to come on a few moments and speak this exhortation you need the power of a productive environment the power of an excellent environment begin to make it today there's something you can do even in a small way and in some way and again the ebooks are done the benefits of excellence and the laws of success every partner that is sewn into this work is going to get an e-copy of these we're about to send them out uh, my office will be doing that and uh those of you that have been waiting for this, thank you for your patience. You will have them as my love gift, as I had said, and uh, because I appreciate you and I want to show my appreciation to you and the word of God that will help you in your success. Uh, that's why I've written these books. Amen. So you can 
be blessed. These are just two of them. I have many more that I'm writing, many others that we were sold out of. We're going to reprint. And uh, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm born to be a writer. I'm just brilliant like that. God has put his hand on my life to write for him. And the command of the language and grammar and punctuation, I just, I just have it. It just flows like that. Uh, but the environment, again, so many people that you need to know to produce the big thing, like I also need. So many people, so many people working in division, doing what God has, you know, ordained for us to get done. We need to uh, get on with the program that heaven has. So, the Lord bless you. Put his fire upon you to make a productive and purpose-filled environment. From today, do something right now to switch gears. If there's someone that's disturbing your peace or blocking your flow, get out of the way of that and go full speed ahead and find the people. Find the environment where it flows and you'll be surprised at how much favor God will give you and how much you can actually get done. I know what I'm talking about. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a witness. I can testify. How much you can get done. It will absolutely amaze you. And I'm praying that happens for you. Because God wants you to prosper, be rich, be successful in your business, in your career, in your life, and in your personal life, and in your personal world. Everything bliss and wonderful and pleasurable and fine and excellent and elegant and exquisite. That's the plan of God. Don't settle for anything less. Poverty is a mess. You see people that live in poverty, their mind is, is blown. They've been indoctrinated with that mess. They need to break out of that. And our ministry is helping a lot of people get out of that wrong mentality and mindset and helping them to understand that God's will is prosperity for you. He wants you to be blessed, the head and not the tail, above only not beneath, rich, not poor, successful, not failing, in abundance and surplus and increase and abundance of finance, not in debt and lack and stress and pressure, ownership even of real estate, not be paying rent and, you know, having landlords. You, you, you're supposed to be the landlord. I heard a testimony of one man of God. He said he couldn't pay anything. He was renting stuff years ago. And now he owns all these properties. God just blessed him because he's been obedient. He's a giver too. He's a sower. So one way you can do that is to sow seed. You could do that. The information is in the heading of the comment and, and in the comment section of how you can connect and partner with us. And as you do, I'm sending you my love gifts in the ebook. I'll have your phone number. I have a way to get, get it to you. And we can contact you and you can send us your email if you'd like it an email. The Lord bless you and let him help you work with him that you can have a powerful and productive and excellent and exquisite environment and atmosphere in your personal world that you can produce and create what God wants you to be doing in Jesus' name. So be it. That's the word of the Lord. Thomas Manton IV, remember Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord your God, who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. Things are to be above only and never beneath. And that's for you, in Jesus' name. Love you much. Talk to you on the next broadcast.